the one thing that gives me um first of all i don't know how you guys feel about sacramento sacramento of course was the tonight's not a good night to evaluate them there was no malik monk um, you know, they, they were without Monk. They were without Sabonis. They were without who else? Fox, Man, Fox Sabonis, Monk, Herder, Herder. I mean, they basically, you know, are just just tucked it away for the playoffs. And it kind of makes me wonder: Is there any? Did the Warriors gain anything tonight other than the win from Sacramento? And I bring this up because. I remember the year when the We Believe Warriors took on Dallas at the end of the year. And Dallas basically just phoned it in. And that actually allowed Golden State to get in the playoffs. They could have they could have showed up and played to the end of the schedule and not played Golden State. Instead, they didn't show up, didn't play their guys. Golden State got in. Golden State beat Dallas and pulled one of the great upsets in the history of the NBA playoffs. Do the Warriors gain anything um, mentally, emotionally on Sacramento by winning in their building tonight, or is it just because the, the there were so many key key contributors for the Kings who didn't go? It's really just about getting the W tonight. Is there any? Is there any over? Is there any, not overlap? Is there any anything that's going to continue? Any residual benefit, I guess, down the road from getting this win tonight? if these teams play in the first round? I, I think the fact that you played at the Golden 1 Center, or, you know, the Splash Brothers had a good game, you're getting acclimated to the lighting and whatnot, yep. that, that's probably the, the big takeaway. I don't think, you know, with the Kings resting, you know, their, their top four players or whatever you want to call it, you're not going to learn too much on the court. It's going to be a completely different yeah. team that the Warriors would theoretically play if they do match up in the playoffs. So I don't think there's a whole lot you can gain other than the fact that you won the game, and right now that's what's keeping you out of this play-in. Right. That's the big thing is is the plus is the win. Stay out of the play-in. I do think, like you said, Baller, uh, there is a – the Warriors are a, you know, the most – uh, seasoned team in the league. So they know what it takes to win in the playoffs. And they know that, you know, they played, you know, the B team tonight. Uh, so they know if they match up, they're going to be playing the A team. And, but to baller, what he said is going in the vibe of winning, being in the locker room, that same locker room coming back next week to it. There's a feel like, Hey, you know, it's not going to be like, oh, we, we got this easy. But they're going to, there's a better feeling than walking away with a taste of a loss. I actually would disagree to a certain degree because um, they were able to um, get a look at two guys tonight uh, that they didn't necessarily know were going to be in the game plan. Trey Lyles, I think, was viewed as kind of a guy, a good, solid player. But he he's probably better than that. So I think that, you know, the words would go back now and figure out, uh, what they need to do when he's on the court. I mean, he looked really, really good. And and also, I think that they had planned for for Davion Mitchell, you know, to kind of be that that you know that Curry stopper, if you will. And he was absolutely horrible. I mean, they had to take him off the court because he couldn't make a shot. Now he's not that bad a shooter, but if he's going to be their explicit defensive guy to go against the Warriors, you, you know, backcourt mates. Um, that's going to put Sacramento at a disadvantage because you have to take out one of their better offensive players. So they learned a lot about Davion Mitchell's lack of confidence or lack of offense. And I think that Trey Lyles is now in the Warriors game plan for next week. 